Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. John Belkowitz here. Uh, we're reviving Concrete Coffee Talk. Um, I wanted to do run this small project on the side, uh, really just uh, going for this consensus-based answer to a question. Uh, and the, the question is something that, that I don't necessarily have to answer, but it's something that I have to see every day is, you know, whatever happened to that relationship between the lab and the field? Whatever happened to that relationship between the academic environment, the engineers, and then the day-to-day -day operations? Um, <clears throat> and, and the way I separate it is between bookcrete, labcrete, and realcrete. And, and that was a concept uh, uh, identified by uh, somebody much smarter than me. Um, but I, I absolutely love the ring of it. Um, and what I wanted to do today was just to take a look back into what I think, and you know, I could be totally off base here, is what the relationship used to be. And I'm, I'm basing this on anecdotal evidence of folks that I've talked to who used to work in, you know, labs that were run by other folks who were on the Hoover Dam projects at the Army Corps of Engineer. Uh, you know, when, you know, the the technology that we use today you know, was not the same, you know, 80 years ago, went through a drastic change 80 plus years ago. Uh, and working with those people uh, to build these amazing projects throughout the world, you know, I, I kind of can see in reading a lot of papers and looking at a lot of projects that went on and how those projects were then applied from the lab to the field. And then there was this ping pong match back and forth until you know, either an innovation was brought to the industry or, you know, something was solved. So I want to break it up first into labcrete, bookcrete, and then realcrete. And I, I want to focus on where did this relationship used to be? So the way I saw it is that that bookcrete, the scientists, the academics, that arena focused on testing, analyzing, comparing, and then repeating that process to identify trends for either novel technologies, innovations, or for answering problems. So that's labcrete. Now, or excuse me, that's bookcrete. Apologize. The second stage of it was what I like to call, or what others like to call, labcrete. This is where the engineers and the scientists really connect for that technical transfer to bring it out of the university basement into a more scalable, palatable, and usable form. Because ultimately, all this work that was going back and forth, not even not just through these two parties, but even the third one, was meant for growing the industry. And what the engineers had to do, and uh, I had a wonderful professor who once great, gave a great analogy, the, the academics were supposed to fine tune, let's say, a laser. You know, in our case, that laser would be concrete. And then the engineers could tell, or the scientists could tell you, you know, the, the capacity of the laser, the wavelength, the energy, so on and so forth. And then the engineers would make a death ray. And the whole concept is, is that the engineers connect the science to the real world, or in this case, the real Crete. Um, and that real Crete is the day-to-day -day operations for our op operational, our, our recurring work schedule, our contractors, our superintendents, our foot soldiers, the folks who are taking these technologies that either have been developed, were developed, or are being developed in the lab, and then bring them out to the day-to-day, -day, not only so we can make money off of it, but also so we can increase the critical path to meet the demand of our ever-increasing need for more infrastructure because of our population growth. Um, that being said, uh, you know the fo folks in the field that real creed, it's also to identify the problems that they're dealing with and demand a need for a solution. Identify, okay, why is this happening and how to do we correct that without screwing up that critical path if we can at all get past that. So the folks in the field ultimately are there for us not only to identify, is this working in the lab? Did we design a good bookcrete to labcrete? But also tell us when things are going wrong. Now, the unfortunate reality is there is a disconnection in that relationship. I don't really know where. And, and what I hope to do over the next weeks, years, months, I, I don't know what it's going to be, or weeks, months, years, is figure it out. You know, Scooby-Doo mystery. Um, 
you know, why it happened, how it happened, and how we can resolve it. Because we are supposed to support each other. You know, there is supposed to be a connection so that all of us can grow. Um, there are a lot of wonderful things about concrete and construction, but there are also some obstacles that are either naturally occurring or manifested from, you know, uh, our own either environmental or political climate. Um, we have to grow as an industry, and the only way that I believe, and I could be wrong, to do that is for all of us to work together. So that's my coffee talk this morning. That's my project moving forward. I'm excited not only to do videos, but podcasts on this, hopefully write some papers. It's going to be exciting. Thanks for joining me today during this coffee talk. Go concrete, beat asphalt.